Vandiyathevan was horrified for a moment seeing that black-faced Siva who had a terrifying appearance at that time. Then his natural bravery overcame the horror. Have you seen him anywhere? Where? He thought that. Yes, yes, when Arakandra was lying under a tree on the bank of the river, didn't two people come and stare at him and then leave? He is one of them. Is that all? Is this a once-in-a-lifetime face? Never seen those piercing eyes anywhere else? Meanwhile, the bull-faced Sivan stared at him and said, Ha! 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 He laughed. Does that sound like a voice you've heard often? Ah se. Is it you? Is it because of you that I have been suffering so much in the middle of the night? When the bull-faced Sivan said that, it seemed that he spoke with a slight change in his voice. Then, who did you come for? Vandiyathevan asked. I came looking for the prince. Kalamugan said. Which prince? What about that? Why do you ask? I'm a prince too, that's why I asked. Look at the expression on the prince's face. What's wrong with my facial features, sir? If I wear a beard and mustache like you, braid hair, and a bone necklace, will my face become a facial mask? I'll get dressed. I'll know then. How long does it take for a beard, mustache, and braids to grow? What wonder is that? It will grow in a day. In a century if you will. I thought so too. What did you think? Nothing. Untie me. I will join your party. Enough is enough. There are still some spies like you in our group. That's why our Maha Sangam ended the way it did today. How did it go? The prince is coming to the Maha Sangha, we were expecting that when he ascended the throne, he was going to vote to accept our Maha Guru as the royal guru. The prince never came. Untie me, I will let you know why the prince has not come. Which prince? Who else? It is Madhurand Hagar, the son of Kandaratitha. I guessed right. What did you guess? I'm just saying you assumed you were the one. What did you assume? When I came looking for the prince, I saw some people coming out of this forest. I knew they were here. They must have tied you up because they suspected you were alone. But I don't know why they left you alive. I say it, untie me. You don't say anything. You can't even be untied. If you agree to do as I say. What do you say? You must agree not to meddle in matters that do not concern you. Is that fair? Vandiyathevan said. His hands were not idle while this talk was going on. They were slowly untying the bandages. When Kalamukhan said, 108 groves should be laid, all the shackles were untied. Vandiyadeva jumped and pushed him down. Kalamukhan was carrying a cramp in his hand and fell on his side, but it was giving some light without going out completely. Vandiyadeva sat on the fallen Kalamukhan's chest and grabbed his facial beard and shook him. The beard came with Vandiyadeva's hand. At the same time, Kalamukhan pushed Vandiyadeva away and stood up. Vandiyadeva picked up the burning candle lying on the ground and held it up. The face of Kalamukhan, who had lost his beard and braids, presented the face of Sakshad Viravaishnava Alvarkadian. They both looked at each other and smiled for a while. Vaishnava! You told me not to interfere in irrelevant matters? What have you done? Vandiyathevan asked. I was not in such danger as you, father. If only I had not come now. Do you think you untied me? You cannot get out of this forest without my help, even if you are untying yourself. You must fall prey to the foxes. Let the foxes lie down. If you've seen the magical foxes that gathered here a while ago, the great thing is that I escaped from those foxes. I know those wizards too. Was it only the wizards who came? Did anyone else come? A little fish had come. It was a miraculous fish that wanted to swallow a tiger. Aha! Uh -huh. Tell me! Tell me! Who was there? What happened? Tell me in detail. Why did you wear this disguise? Where did you go that evening? 
What happened where you went, dash if you tell me all that, I will tell you what happened here. I have nothing more to say. I came to know that the Kalamukar Mahasangam will meet at Kalat Takarai this morning. I went in this disguise just to see what was going on there. After watching, I thought that I might come and meet you at Kalat Takarai Dhanathura. The Mahasangma was also assembled, the great Palyavatareya was there. The great guru of the Kalamukars was also there. But who was the main thing? They expected him to come, but he never came. They were expecting Prince Madhurand Hagar. Yes, how did you know that? If Madurandagar ascends the throne of Tanjavur, the kingdom will be held beautifully. Why do you say that? Couldn't he tame a rogue horse? How could he tame petty kings like Palyavatareya, rebellious Kalamukha Sivas and warlike Vaishnavas? All Workadian laughed and said, Did you see Madhurand Hagar on your way? Do you know what happened to him? He asked. Vandiyathevan said that he was following Madhurand Hagar, and suddenly seeing Devarthi, his horse ran away, that he went in search of him for some distance, and finally saw only the horse at Kalathumet. Then he said, Alas! Alas! Where did the horse throw him, or what? Perhaps his life was in danger. That is why he did not come to your Mahasangam, shall we go again and look for him? He asked. It's beautiful. What do we have to do with that? Let's see our work. Let's go at once. We must be at the canoes of the Kalita River before daybreak, said Alwarkadian. If Madurand Hakar fell down and died at the foot of the ditch or at the edge of the field. Even then, would you tell us what is our concern? That would not have happened. Anurudha would have taken care before that. Prime Minister Anurudha? What does he know about this? Aha! Uh -huh. What is that, you ask? Nothing can happen anywhere in this kingdom without the knowledge of Anvil Anradha. Oh! Does he know about the conspiracy at the Kadampur mansion? Remember one thing. Didn't we both stand under a tree and watch the Palo of the Queen of Palvur during the Viranarayanapurath festival? Yes, I still remember the excitement you caused when the veil of Palak was removed. You asked me, can I give a straw to the Queen of Bavur? You said Chichi. What's that work? I thought you wanted to give me something? Love. I wanted to warn Madhurand Hagar not to trust the words of the conspirators, as ordered by the Prime Minister. Did you know that it was Madhurand Hagar who was in the palanquin? I suspected at first, but when the curtain was lifted, the secret was revealed. You are a good presser. No matter how hard I tried, you refused to tell me that it was Madhurand Hagar and not the Queen of Palyavur, who was in the palanquin, right? Aren't you the only pushover? You refused to even say where you were going this evening. Then you would have insisted on meddling in that too. Look how embarrassed you are now. At least from now on. Does the First Minister know about the Kalamukar meeting and Madhurand Hakkar's intention to go there? Teriyamala sent me. At the same time, Madhurand Hakkar has also made arrangements not to go there. If someone said that he picked up the fire, he must have been Anuradhar's person. He would have deliberately scared the horse and made it run away. Someone would have picked up the prince who had fallen to the ground and saved him. All this time he was probably riding a chariot or a palanquin towards Tanjavur. He's going. Come. Let's go our way too. Oh Vaishnava! I cannot come. What is this, what happened to the thing you agreed to? I hear that Adita Kari Kalar has left Kanchi. If only we went to Vayuvka Manovka at once. Would you please give the leaf that is due to Aditha Kari Kalar? He will not come disguised as a woman like Madhurand Hakar, he will not travel in hiding at night. What are you going to do? Actually I didn't set out this evening following Madhurandaka. I happened to see Madhurandaka on the way when I started following someone else. I'll make a prediction. It'll be a lady you keep going. You wicked Vaishnava! I'm going to crack your skull one day and see you again. It is impossible for you. I have already pledged my skull to a bull. Let it go. 
Whom did you follow from the womb? Who is that woman? The Kajumbalar princess had come to the soothsayer's house. She got into a palanquin and left alone. In fact, I did not follow the delirious woman. Her palanquin went a little way from the path I was supposed to take. Suddenly some men came and attacked the palanquin. They tied the nursemaid to a tree and took only Vanati with her. They are gone. O oh Vaishnava! I do not wish to come with you without knowing what has become of that woman. What makes you so worried about that girl? What do you mean by that? Wasn't the nobleman of Elam the son of a small velar? Wasn't he the dearest friend of the younger bratty? Also, wasn't there a proposal to marry Vanati Devi to Pani's husband? Father! Pani's rich man has drowned in the sea? What is the concern now about his marriage? What's certain that he's dead? Guess. So you think he might be alive? Vaishnava! If it is your intention to pry my mouth and learn some secret, forget it. Okay. Okay. I know you're a big pushover but don't worry about the goddess Vanati. You know very well that the youngest brat depends on her. That's why I'm worried too. Could it be that the younger brat didn't know this danger came to the goddess Vanati? If you don't know today, you will know tomorrow. What's the use of knowing tomorrow? If the Kalamukas sacrifice that maiden tonight. Are you saying that Vanati was attacked and taken away by the Kalamukas? That's how it seemed to me. Vanati's friend told me the same. If that is true, you need not worry one bit. The Kajumbalar dynasty is from Kalamukka. If Vanati Devi is known to be a Kajumbalar girl, the Kalamukas will woo her. Oko. I missed this. That is why the Kalamukas are against Madhurandak Deva. If these skull preachers are against it, what's going to happen? You don't know. The greatest families in this country belong to the Kalamukas. There are many such in Sanyam and that is why Palyavatarayar had made this arrangement today. He tried to enlist the support of the Kalamukas for Madhurandhagar. It failed because of a mishap by a horse. Are you leaving and coming with me or shall I go? Vandiyathevan got up reluctantly and held the horse in his hand. They found an accessible way through the dense forest and came out. Look there! All Workadian pointed to the sky. Vandiyadeva saw that Domekatu's tail was longer than ever before and spread over one half of the sky. A cold wind blows. Vandiyadeva's body trembled. In the distance, a village dog was crying in a low sad voice.